Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ken, I am an emotional health coach who helps people overcome toxic relationships with family and previous loved ones to help them set better boundaries, communicate better and be prepared to co-create healthy relationships. Today, I wanna to talk about how to be single and happy. And this is from the perspective as a white gay man. So I wanna be clear that my experiences are not going to be able to cover everyone's lived experiences of what it's like being single. And I also appreciate that too, that my current state of well-being is probably not gonna be the same as everyone else's who may or may not wanna be in a relationship. So with that all in mind, I will talk more about what I've personally found has worked for me and also what I hope can be of help to people, especially those of us who are struggling with loneliness because I feel like that is a very big theme that I talk about on this channel. Also, before I get started into this video, if you have any experiences that you'd like to share about your feelings about being single, please feel free to drop them in the comments below. I'd love to have a conversation where we can talk more about this. So diving right into this topic, I think the general overview I will give about how I feel about being single is that it's amazing in the sense that Whilst there are moments of understandable loneliness, I wanna be clear that that usually can come out of a place of me feeling disconnected with myself, usually me not following something that I'm enjoying, or perhaps me genuinely just not being around enough people and me needing to actually connect with others and work through different phases of my life. And you know, even when I'm attempting partnership and dating, breakups happen and they're uncomfortable and they can also induce a sense of loneliness too. So it's not like it's immune from challenges, but I wanna start out at least with one major thing, which is understanding more about myself and that self relationship, because I think that's a key part of this experience that works for me. So from my perspective, I have never really grown up feeling the need to follow certain traditional, I suppose, heteronormative, roadmaps to getting into partnership. In other words, I'd never felt the urge to get into a relationship, be married at say like 30 for instance, and then have kids at 35. I've been very laid back in my approach to life in the sense that I've just allowed myself to choose certain things or be thrown into different opportunities where it's allowed me to feel what feels right to me and also journal and reflect on a lot of that too. A lot of that relationship building with ourself also helps us develop a more positive relationship in singleness because you quickly figure out what you like, the kind of people that you wanna spend time with, even as friends, and also more importantly, what you wanna build for your life too that you can start doing because I think a trap for a lot of people is thinking they need a relationship to do that. So one practice that I've found has been really helpful for developing a much more positive relationship with myself has definitely been through journaling. I really love asking myself a bunch of questions like, what do I like? What do I enjoy? Because it's an evolving process and it has helped me focus more on the things that I enjoy. It also has meant too that if I've ever felt discomfort, annoyance or frustration or even anger, those valuable emotions have allowed me to then quickly reorientate myself where I've needed to and also to find ways of communicating that where necessary too, which has been really helpful. I also have found that that reflective process has also enabled me to focus more on what I love, which in my case is definitely more counseling therapeutic work because I find that's a really good fit for me. But I wouldn't necessarily have that if I feel I was co-creating something with someone. And so I think just being able to have that dialogue with myself is really key in having a better relationship. Another really key component that has really helped me in singleness is just building up really good relationships. This has been an evolving practice where I have met people online, I've met people in person, whether it be that I was studying with people, something that I liked, being part of communities, including organizations, companies I've worked for, or even just interacting with people on social media like Instagram, where I've built up a bit of a network of people that I've gotten to know over time and continue to chat with on a regular basis. Now, the reason that that's really important is because it's meant that I've been able to figure out more about the kinds of people that I want to have in my life, the kind of relationships that I want to maintain, because I think we often have this fear of dying alone and it's a valid fear. And I'm not going to debunk it on this video, but it's more just the fact that it's good to have a sense of community around you, a support network that you can rely on. And I'm going to get deeper into that in just a second when I talk more about that. Now, what I mean by understanding how your social network works 
is having a really clear understanding of the differences between acquaintances, friends, and best friends. And this is a skill that I had to learn over time because initially I used to just sort of bring anyone into my crowd and the people who were usually more, you know, fun, enjoyable to hang out with, who wanted to see me all the time, I quickly realized later on were perhaps not the best people for a long-term experience because they were often like a hot flame that would burn out really quickly. So people who really align with my values like honesty, integrity, consistency, communication, allowance, acceptance are people who I have within my core group of people that I hang out and speak with on a regular basis. Then I have friends who I've known for a while who I may not necessarily want to tell them everything, but I'll go to every now and then to hang out with. And they're acquaintances who, you know, they're good people to hang around with, but I don't need them to be 100% compatible with my life. And they're just people that I can hang around with. I also want to make it very clear too, that if you're living in a place that's quite remote and you don't have access to a lot of people, you're kind of left with what you've got. And that can naturally be quite problematic. I've worked with people before who've lived in very provincial areas where there wasn't a very intelligent group of people around because it was just, you know, it was that kind of community where they weren't really open to that sort of level of thinking or awareness. And it is what it is. And they've had to move to new locations too, if it was available to them. Otherwise it came down to a case of acceptance for just sort of figuring out what they could do with the community that they had. And I think that the key thing that I want to say is that it's not always easy to make friends and to also be able to socialize. So however you are able to build that network of people up, I'd say it's good about finding the ways in which you want to do that. For me, I love being in person and meeting people, but I also realize too that I'm very capable of also interacting with people online as well and building up those relationships. It's really got to be about a method that works best for you. Another thing that I have found to be extremely helpful in enjoying singleness has been following what I love. And it's very important to understand the distinction between something that we're interested in versus passionate about. We can have many, I suppose, interests or things that we might describe as passion. But for me, for instance, I enjoy scuba diving. I enjoy playing video games. I enjoy reading, but I do not necessarily want to become a scuba diving instructor, a video game creator or an author. My skill set where I find the most enjoyment is interacting one on one with people in a sort of a therapeutic environment. And for me, that's where I get my most amount of love because I can do it for free even at times, but I still like being compensated for it every now and then too. My point is, that's what I love. And when I follow what I love, that's when I get the most energy back for myself too. It's good to have interests, but when you turn an interest into a project, it usually burns you out and you're not getting that same level of satisfaction and love that you would from your passion. But also as a man who's had a lot of privileges in my life where I've been fortunate enough to do what I love, I wanna make it clear that not everyone else has those opportunities too. For some, just following what you need is enough for the time being and often being with someone can really help support you in that experience. So there's nothing wrong with that. I just wanna make it clear that I think when you have the opportunity afforded to you to follow what you love and money may not be a, such a crucial problem for you, then that's amazing. It's very difficult for a lot of people to do that, dare I say, a large percentage of the planet, in my opinion. So I just wanna make it clear that it's one of those things where following what you love is not necessarily easy to do, but if you have the means to do it, amazing. And for those of you that don't, filling out more of those basic needs of food, shelter, money, you know, and even company can be sufficient for the experience until those needs are met to the point where you, then you can experience more of what you love. And that I think helps a lot. Another thing that gets really easily missed when you're being single is the fact that boundaries are important. And this is something that I think a lot of people who are trying to work on, especially if you're a recovering people pleaser, perfectionist, boundaries are so important. It's that ability to know when you're burning out, you're feeling resentful and being able to speak up about it and also find activities and ways to protect your energy and your peace. It's very easy, I find, particularly if you do feel lonely and that's okay, a lot of people do, to seek out company and also to even sometimes physically connect. And I think as a gay man, it's very easy for us to want to physically connect with people to help us feel a bit more, you know, at peace temporarily. The challenge can be that when we do interact with a lot of people where we're going out all the time and spending so much energy with other people, is that it can leave us on the burnt out end of the spectrum. So learning to respect where we have space for those people is important. And I think it's also important to end this video talking about romantic relationships and dating. 
I think as someone who's been single for most of their life, that dating has brought so much joy to me in the context that even though there's been a lot of pain in some experiences that I've had, it's also been some of the most beneficial and self-reflective experiences I've ever had as well too. For people who genuinely prefer being in a relationship, more power to you. I think that it's really good to know that information. And the only way to know that is when you put yourself out there. And for me, honestly, I really love being single. It's really a case where, yes, I have challenges that I have to deal with in, you know, where I do feel like, oh, I would love to be with someone. And those moments come, I'm not immune to those. And sometimes I will act on those too and still go out and date people and that's fine. But it's just about understanding where you're at in that. And for being in a relationship, it's just a whole set of new challenges and experiences to have too. So really at the end of the day, it's just about learning what they both involve for you. So I'll wrap this up by saying that for me personally, I have found that reflection, being able to have strong boundaries to protect my energy, building up friendships, and even still dating every now and then to get to know more about myself has meant that I've actually developed a much better relationship with myself to the point where I really love being single. And it would take a lot for me to be like, oh, actually, I really want to be with someone. And those moments every now and then come to me and I really enjoy the idea of dating and getting to know someone because, you know, that possibility is always exciting. And I do find that being in a relationship is something that I'm definitely looking for down the road. It's just not something I'm hankering on. And I think being free of that desperation and that sense of like, I need this really does mean that I can just enjoy my life as it is and follow what I love, which I think is one of the core ingredients of this. Cause when you are following what you love, you don't necessarily feel that same urgency to be in a relationship. So anyways, if this video was helpful, please like, and subscribe and feel free to comment below your experiences of being single. And until next time, I look forward to seeing you. Goodbye.